Hello and welcome. I am Exit Light, and this is another in my series of true unsolved murder cases. This case is known as the Arroyo Grande Jane Doe, and sometimes known as the Jane Arroyo Grande Doe. At approximately 9.20 p.m. on October 5, 1980, an unclothed white female between the ages of 13 and 25 years old however, it is believed that she was younger than 19, was found with blunt force trauma to the back of her head. That was believed to have been caused by a hammer. Also, there were signs of injury to her face and stab wounds on her head and back. She was found near Arroyo Grande Boulevard, close to State Highway 146, where Interstate 215 is now. She had been placed in what was referred to as a posed position, and she was face down. The body was discovered by two men driving on a dirt road. One of the men was an off-duty police officer. Examiners determined that the blade of the weapon, which was believed to be an ice pick, was around three inches long. The body appeared to have been washed and fragments of a shower curtain were found nearby. Her hair was a naturally brownish red, also referred to as strawberry blonde, and it was shoulder length. She was about 5 feet 2 inches tall and weighed between 103 and 110 pounds. She still had her wisdom teeth, and there was a gap visible between her two teeth on the upper right set. She was wearing earrings, and her fingernails were painted silver. The victim had dental fillings in some of her teeth, showing that she had seen a dentist. Her eyes were a hazel-ish blue, and what was presum presumably an amateur tattoo of an S was on the inside of her upper right arm. This tattoo appeared to have been done right before she had been murdered. She likely died a day before she was discovered. The victim also had a suture procedure on one of her teeth, which leads investigators to believe that she was not impoverished. The officer who discovered her body and was off duty believes that there is someone out there who knows who this woman is, this girl is, that this girl has parents and family and friends and loved ones who know she's missing and miss her. Investigators made extensive efforts to get the body of the young woman identified. The victim's fingerprints and dental records were taken but could not be matched to anyone. Eventually, the victim's DNA profile was developed by the University of North Texas and it was entered into the national database but it failed to turn up her identity. Television shows broadcast this case in hopes to generate leads, none of which led to her identification or apprehension of her killer or killers. Forensic facial reconstructions were created to provide a likeness of Jane Doe in the hopes that it would generate recognition for those that may have known her. In 2003, her body was exhumed when authorities were following clues on a missing girl from California, but that was ruled out by DNA. To this day, 11 missing girls have been excluded as potential identities for the victim. The body was ex exhumed again in 2009. The former coroner for Clark County, where the victim's body had found now works for the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and he also explained that someone is missing their little girl. And he asserts his beliefs that there were individuals that would know who this victim was, citing that he hopes the reconstructions created of the victim will trigger recognition. He explained that the victim's case was one of the reasons that the local department developed a cold case unit for its unsolved cases. In June of 2015, Arroyo Grande Jane Doe's case 
was officially reopened by investigators. On October 5, 2015, on the 35th anniversary of her discovery, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children released two new reconstructions, one frontal view of the face and the other of her profile. The new images have replaced a version that the organization had created originally. As a side note, the officer who had discovered her body donated his money for her funeral and her burial. He regularly visits the site with his wife and regularly donates flowers in her memory. If you or anyone you know recognizes the pictures of this Jane Doe, please contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Somebody knows who she is. Somebody loved her. Somebody misses her. And at least one other person knows who killed her. And it's likely that they have told another person. Thank you for listening to this story. And like I said, if you have any information, please contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Good night.